Good evening and welcome to Evening Prayer for Tuesday, November the 3rd. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ, we have come to the setting of the sun, and we look to the evening light. We sing to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. Sing praise to your name, O Most High. To herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for the evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our constant companion on the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope among us, that we may recognize you as you are revealed in the scriptures and in the breaking of the bread. Grant this for your name's sake. Amen. O Lord, who shall sojourn in your tent? Who shall dwell on your holy hill? He who walks blamelessly and does what is right, and speaks truth in his heart. Who does not slander with his tongue and does no evil to his neighbor, nor takes up a reproach against his friend in whose eyes a vile person is despised, but who honors those who fear the Lord, who swears to his own hurt and does not change, who does not put out his money at interest and does not take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved. Our New Testament reading today is from Matthew chapter 22. And again Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son, and sent his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding feast, but they would not come. Again he sent other servants, saying, Tell those who are invited, See, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. But they paid no attention and went off, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his servants, treated them shamefully, and killed them. The king was angry, and he sent his troops and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding feast is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore to the main roads and invite to the wedding feast as many as you find. And those servants went out into the roads and gathered all whom they found, both bad and good, so that the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to look at the guest, he saw there was a man who had no wedding garment. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding garment? and he was speechless. Then the king said to his attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and cast him into the outer darkness. In that place there will be gnashing of teeth and weeping, for many are called, but few are chosen. Then the Pharisees went and plotted how to entangle him in his words, and they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God truthfully, and you do not care about anyone's opinion, for you are not swayed by appearances. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why put me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. And Jesus said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? They said, Caesar's. Then he said to them, Therefore render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard it, they marveled, and they left him and went away. Our devotion with Martin Luther tonight is from Psalm 2, verse 11. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Balancing fear and joy. When I was a young man, I hated this verse because I didn't want to hear that I should fear God. I didn't realize that fear should always be combined with joy and hope. I didn't understand the difference between what we do and what Christ does for us. Everything we do is corrupt, just as all of creation is spoiled, so we shouldn't become overconfident. We need to be afraid of God's judgment, but what Christ does for us is holy and perfect, and we should cling to his mercy. So we should fear God in a way that doesn't entirely exclude joy. It should be a genuine joy, a joy that can't be kept bottled up in our hearts. Someone who truly believes that he has been reconciled to God because of Christ will have a smile on his face, a twinkle in his eyes, and a song of praise on his lips. 
The Holy Spirit tells us to serve our Heavenly King with inward and outward joy, combined with reverence. If we don't, we become overconfident, we'll start acting like animals, and sink into lustful human pleasures. If we make sure we don't become overconfident, then God won't be offended by our happiness. In fact, he's offended by sadness and demands joy. That's why people who were in mourning were not allowed to bring God's sacrifices, and why the offerings in Malachi were unacceptable to God. Malachi 2.13 We have to mix joy with fear and mix fear with hope. This psalm warns us not to become either proud or despondent. Falling into despair is as offensive to God as being overconfident. God doesn't want us to be down in the dumps or high up in the clouds. He wants us to be somewhere in the middle. We join together in the Apostles' Creed in the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we praise your fathomless mercy, with which you take pity on sinful men. All the prophets and apostles preach this to us in your holy word. Let our hope not be put to shame when we pray to you for all who suffer at this time. For behold, the evil foe has become mighty, and the great ones of this world rule often with unrighteousness. O God, who in former times caused your saints to overcome injustice, strengthen also today all who stand in need of your help. Grant that all prisoners of war, held as slaves and sacrifices of earthly wrath, may return to their home. Stand by all refugees and homeless people and be their justice. Be a father to the widows and orphans with your strong protection. Go through bars and fences to those who are imprisoned for the sake of your name. Strengthen them for a good witness, and let them not waver in the confession of your name. Teach us, through their example and the example of so many holy martyrs, to be ever watchful of the confession of your Son's name. Let us not be put to shame when the evil foe lays his hand on us. But if it is your will that we be persecuted for confessing Jesus as our Lord and only Savior, then support us in your grace that we may withstand all trials and grant us peaceful rest. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, you invite us to trust in you for our salvation. Deal with us not in the severity of your judgment, but by the grace, greatness of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. For shorter meditation this evening is from Psalm 105, verse 1. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Honor God's name. Children should constantly be urged and moved to honor God's name and to have it always upon their lips for everything that may happen to them or come to their notice. Psalm 8, 2, 34, 1, Matthew 21, 16, Hebrews 13, 15. For that is the true honor of his name, to look to it and call upon it for all consolation. Psalm 66, 2, Psalm 105, 1. Then, as we have heard in the first commandment, the heart by faith gives God the honor due him first. Afterward, the lips give him honor by confession. This is also a blessed and useful habit and very effective against the devil. He is ever around us and lies in wait to bring us into sin, shame, and disaster and trouble. 2 Timothy 2.26 But he hates to hear God's name and cannot remain long where it is spoken and called upon from the heart. To confuse the devil, I say, we should always have his holy name in our mouth so that the devil may not be able to injure us as he wishes.
I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good night.